Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my word. So sorry. Um, welcome to another episode of the Aaron Chase Show. Uh, I feel like a lot of times there's new technology, new things, and today was the audio glitch, but I think we're good to go. Um, today, I want to share some ideas with you about stretching your grocery dollars and getting as much as you can from your proteins, okay? And the reason I want to talk specifically about that today and the reason that I have ground beef sizzling right here is because meat prices are cray, okay? Um, you probably already know this. You've already noticed it. Um, and this is, I'm speaking specifically to, okay, let me, let me back up. The meat, poultry, eggs category on the consumer price index, which was released about, I guess about a week ago now, 13.5% increase year over year. And I think even within that, there are even like subcategories, like the beef, like the, the beef part of that is up like 20, 22%, which is just wild. So we need to be stretching as much as we can. Um, and that's, that's the why, but I'm going to get into the how of this, the how of this here um, in just a second. Let me give this a quick turnover before it gets too brown. Um, I have a recipe. I linked it to the video. I wanted to cook with this topic. Just a second. Sizzle, sizzle. All right. I wanted to cook with this topic because I just wanted to cook because I wanted to feature this recipe um, and and that. So before um, we get to that, uh, the actual seven things we can do, I want to tell a little story. So when I was in high school, I played so oh, younger, like a elementary and high school. I played softball and I always played first base. Um, because I was tall and because I have super long legs and because I could like stretch like crazy like this. So I'm always like hollering at the first baseman when my boys play baseball, like stretch. Anyways, this is what I'm hollering at you for stretching your proteins as far as you can. And I'm going to break all of that down. Um, so when I think about proteins, um, I'm feeding a bunch of boys. It's, it's meats, it's animal proteins, it's dairy, it's eggs. Um, chicken, beef, pork, fish, right? Those animal proteins, right? There are other types of proteins that we're going to get into that are not animal proteins. We are going to dive into that. And of course, um, there's the whole like meat list, like just don't have protein, which uh, not protein, don't have animal protein, have plant protein, right? And so we're going to kind of break all that down. But I want you to think about ways to stretch your protein costs um, a sp meat, vegetables are up too. Everything, everything is up, right? So how can we stretch this out as far as we can to then maximize our grocery dollars, maximize our savings? Um, and really at this point, it's just counterbalancing, um, rebalancing against inflation, right? So if the meat price has gone up 20%, we're going to stretch the meat 20%, right? Like two can play at this game. Inflation you want to play? Come and play. We got you. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight against it, and I want to help you do that as well. Okay, one, I want to ask you, what are some of your favorite recipes that stretch meat? Okay, I'm going to break down a couple ideas and share a couple things with you. Sorry about the puppy barking in the background. Um, but one of the first, I'll start with the first, and maybe this will get your, your creative juices flowing. Um, beef and beans. So this is a pound of ground beef that I am basically letting brown itself while I chat with you. Okay, and I'm gonna add to it, once it's done cooking, uh, a can of black beans. And then I'm gonna take that and we're gonna make oven tacos. We'll do it here in just a second. I had to put the, cam the, the computer and camera over here so you could see the beef. So the beef and the black beans is, the black beans are gonna stretch the beef out, right? Um, beans are an incomplete protein. Okay, sorry, I was draining the beans. Beans are an incomplete protein, and so adding them in here is just going to add some protein to the 
to the dish, stretches it out, okay? So I did not need to drain that, which is why I just tossed this all in here. So I'm gonna do one pound of ground beef, a 15 ounce can of black beans. I don't wanna crush these black beans up with this. I'm just trying to break up the last of this beef. Cody really has some things to say today, my friends. I'm so sorry. Every now and then they just get wild and crazy when I'm on the... Uh... So, ground beef and, and black beans in this case. Another idea for stretching out um, beef, I would call this um, an extender, okay? It's not really a filler, it's an extender. It's because the garbage truck's here. That's why he's barking. I'm so sorry. Uh, stick with me. Black bean, uh, beef and bean tacos, right? So this is what we have going on here. Um, stretching out as like an extender, okay? Um, Jessica, you are reading my mind. That was next on my list. It is uh, like sloppy joe style lentils, okay? Lentils are great, Jessica says, because you can hide, hide the little, the lentils are smaller, so you can hide them from your kids. Um, if you're using like a green lentil that kind of turns a little bit brown um, when it's cooked, it kind of melts and blends into the, like a sloppy joe sauce. So sloppy joe lentils is a great idea. Um, just things that you can do to extend the beef in, in, in adding in a, a bean or a lentil or even a grain. Um, if you wanted to um, mix in something like, you know, oatmeal with, I would probably do a quick cooking oatmeal, like the pre, the pre-cut quick cooking oats into like a meatloaf, right? The oats is also an incomplete protein, so that'll just kind of help fill out. It's going to make it feel a little heartier. It's also going to extend, give you a little bit more um, in, in your meatloaf, right? So extenders, okay? Um, another thing for protein, there you go, Jessica, sloppy toes and lentils. You can try it. Let, let me know how your kids like it. Um, so Nicole is saying veggies in the blender instead of grains, right? Great idea um, to expand, expand and fill in on that protein. Um, the next thing that I wanted to share and that I'm introducing is the rice and beans Wednesday, okay? So this is rice and beans friends rice and beans literally the most budget friendly meal i've been doing this for 13 years i can still make a, a rice and beans dinner for my six people for under five bucks it is the way to do it um, and i want you to do rice and beans once a week okay we're going to call it rice and beans wednesday and it's going to be a thing on our menus now because we need another or a new day of the week where we're not cooking with the more expensive animal proteins okay so rice and beans wednesday i have a whole slew of rice and beans recipes i, I can drop the link when i uh finish here the video i'm going to add to these tacos a can of diced tomatoes and green chilies just to give a little extra pop of flavor and two tablespoons of taco seasoning so i'm just going to mix all that in that is a lot of taco filling I actually think it's more than I, I might have to end up doing soft tacos as well for these oven tacos. We're just going to mix this all together and then I'm going to turn off the heat because the meat's already cooked and I don't want this to overcook. Extend beef with some beans or lentils. Uh, rice and beans. Okay, rice and beans, brown rice and any bean uh, is are incomplete proteins, but together they become a complete protein, which is why rice and beans meals are filling and they are super budget friendly. The next one I wanted to share, idea I wanted to share is think shredded meat. So that could be shredded chicken, shredded pork, shredded, turkey's a little hard to shred. Um, although you could do it if you cooked it in the slow cooker, uh, like turkey breast in the slow cooker, you could shred turkey, um, shredded beef, and the reason I say that is because you can then turn shredded beef or chicken or pork or turkey into a, you can extend it into a lot of things. So you need a little bit to make sandwiches. You need a little bit to make enchiladas. You, you could do, you know, a whole chicken makes three meals or um, a five pound beef roast that you got on sale. Uh, you could, that'll turn into two to three meals, depending on how much beef your family eats. 
Um, so thinking about, you know, pulled pork, you can do pulled pork um, nachos, you could do pulled pork sandwiches, you could just do pulled pork with some, you know, baked beans and, you know, green salad as a side, just, just like simple options. But shredded meats are really fantastic for, you know, you kind of cook it once and then you can stretch it out over a couple meals. Um, other things is think, you know, eggs and kind of the breakfast for dinner option. So eggs with chorizo, eggs with bacon, eggs with potatoes and bacon, egg, like think about how migas, is, migas are really great, which is a little bit of eggs, a little bit of potatoes, a little bit of corn tortilla strips, like a little bit of salsa. Like just think about how you can extend um, the cheaper uh, animal proteins like eggs. Okay, there's some ideas for you there. Um, okay. I talked about whole chickens. We talked about shredded meats. We talked about eggs, um, dolloping with some kind of protein heavy dairies like sour creams or mixing in cream cheese into things just to kind of fill, fill in the meal a little bit with, if you can do dairy, I know that there, dairy is something that a lot of people avoid, um, for different reasons, but if you can, if you can tolerate it, your family can tolerate it. That's a great way to, you know, you can mix cream cheese and do a, a, a creamy salsa chicken where it's salsa chicken, cream cheese. It's all shredded together. It just, it fills it out. We just shared a queso chicken tacos recipe on the blog last week. That is really fantastic. And the cheese just, it just fills it out. Um, it just, it having that extra protein and fat will, will help fill it out. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention, I would be remiss if I did not include this is to be mindful of your portion size. Okay. Um, you know, we're in the, U well, I'm in the U S I know many of my, my friends are, and it's like portions have gotten bigger and bigger, like at restaurants. And I feel like they've gotten bigger. Four ounces of protein is all you need in a meal. Okay. So be mindful of that. Um, and just, are you serving too much? Are you buying too much? Could you take, you know, that five pound, five pound, that'll cook down a little bit. So you know, you'll lose a little liquid, you'll lose a little fat. I'm gonna just do a quick shift a roux here so we can make these tacos together real quick right after I wipe this counter that I thought was clean, but it's not. Uh, so be thinking about the proper portion size. Four ounces is the size, about a size of a deck of cards. Okay, so pulled pork, you really only need a pound of pulled pork to do, okay, sorry. You really only need about a pound of pulled pork to get four servings of pulled pork for a sandwich, okay? Um, so it's really, be mindful of that. Okay, I'm gonna shift the camera down here in just a second. Okay, so what we're gonna do to finish these off, these are oven tacos. I love oven tacos because you can make a whole bunch at once. Super easy, super fantastic. Shredded cheese in bulk is a great way to save money also on all these things. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I have right here, just get this organized so you can see everything easily. Oh, sorry. This is how we're gonna finish off these oven tacos. All right, can we see that okay? Yes, all right. So these are just gonna be, you can get the stand-up shells, but you don't really need to when you're gonna be nesting them all together like this. And the, so you just fill up like this, set it in here. Well, I'll do the cheese at the end. Uh, so we can do it all at once. So you can see this ground beef really got extended. There will probably, I'm gonna actually fill these pretty hearty, pretty heavy. And then we're just gonna bake these since the meat's already cooked and it's already actually warm. You really need to only put these in the oven, 350 for like five to 10 minutes just to melt the cheese on top. And then if you want to, you know, they're already well seasoned. So if you wanted to do a little, another garnish, you could do avocado, sour cream, keep it simple and just have the shredded cheese like this, salsa. If, if there's already a good, the tomatoes and the taco seasoning, there's already got quite a bit of like salsa flavor in there, but you could always add more. So just keep the topping simple, what you have in the fridge, what fits into your grocery budget. But this is just a great way, I'm gonna do this now that I'm running out of room. This is just a great way to stretch the protein. In this case, it's adding beans. Um, a couple other things we talked about, I'll just quickly recap while we're doing this is 
let's see. Okay, we talked about this type of a thing where it's beef and bean. Um, it could be adding beans to a pasta dish. It could be adding beans to uh, chili. Uh, it could be adding beans to something like this. It's more like taco style. Um, you could also do lentils with sloppy joes is a good one. Um, the next thing we talked about was rice and beans Wednesday that we're going to start talking a lot more about. You'll hear about around here. These tacos are wider than the last ones I had used. I'm going to have to see if I can fit. I don't know about this. We'll have to see. These are like, the last ones I used were a little skinnier. Um, <laughs> we'll see if we can get all these to fit in here very carefully without cracking any shells. Okay. The rice and beans Wednesday. Rice plus beans or rice plus lentils, complete protein. We have an amazing brown rice and uh, lentil, like honey mustard style. You can bake. We have that on the website. We actually have a whole lot of black uh, rice and beans type recipes on the $5 dinners website. I can still make a $5 dinner using a rice and beans recipe, even with all the inflation. You can still do it because the cost of rice is still so affordable. The cost of beans, especially if you're willing to cook the dried beans, super affordable. Canned beans, they're still very affordable to um how can i do this how can i do this this is a math puzzle now normally i can fit them like this eight across and then the four friends help <laughs> hmm maybe oh there we go they, i just needed to stand them up a little better okay that one was a little crooked all right so here you'll see how this got stretched like a pound of ground beef is probably meant to be the right portion for this many tacos. But look at how much, because yes, these the, the food manufacturers talk about all of this. Um, so yes, this is, can you see, oh, there's Daisy. She's like, I smell beef. Where do I get some? Watch, she's gonna hop up. She'll hop up right here. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> so this is this is quite a bit, stretched out that's like two portions worth right there so we took a pound of ground beef and essentially made this would say this is this could be six portions if everybody had two tacos four portions if everybody has three plus two more portions here that's like literally a visual example of how this stretching works okay so with this i'm gonna tell you what i'm gonna do with this right now i am gonna probably uh make nachos for steve and i steve works from home and i'm gonna be home uh, today. So I'll probably make nachos and just put, you know, a portion of portion. Um, and then we'll have that for dinner. Is that too much taco in one day? Not if I'm saving money <laughs> and not if I'm eating at home. Right? So the last thing we need to do to top this off is this just a little shredded cheese. And again, in the oven for five to 10 minutes, it's only to melt the cheese, 350, eight to 10 minutes tops, probably get it in five especially because the beef is already warm, so it's already gonna start to melt the cheese even before you put it in the oven. So just like that, you just need a couple pinchfuls to fill this out. And then you could serve this with, again, taco toppings if you like. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, um, for budget purposes, if I already have avocados or avocados are on sale or I had a big tub of sour cream, like I would probably garnish with something either that I already had or that was on sale. Um, of course, you could do um, like more salsa, even though there's a little bit of salsa in, in there, you could still do a little salsa like that and on top. And there you go. Side dishes, you could do corn, you could do just steamed broccoli, green beans, whatever, salad, whatever your favorite veggie options that you, your family enjoys, you could do that with this. So this is the oven chicken talk, not chicken the beef and black bean oven tacos. The recipe is linked here on the video. Um, I think, Angela, this one's there. If it's not, we could certainly add it. Um, Angela's asking if this is part of our freezer cooking program. If you were going to freeze this, then you would freeze this like this. You wouldn't freeze it in this form. You would freeze the meat already put together. And we often will do different, uh, a large batch of, of ground beef. If I see ground beef on sale or I get it from the warehouse store, I've got six pounds of ground beef. I typically brown it all. And then I would turn some into taco meat, some into sloppy joe meats, maybe some spaghetti sauce or something like that. So 
If you were gonna freeze this, we call that a filling. We would freeze it just like you see here as a filling. And then you can just thaw it out because the meat's already cooked, thaw it out in the fridge. Once it's thawed out, add it to the tacos and bake it quickly. So that would be a way to get like, a, we would call that the filling or the meal starter into the freezer. I will check to see if this one's in there. It's a good question. I'll get that to you. Um, last, tomorrow night, I'm gonna actually shift up here. <laughs> last, tomorrow night on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. So that's tomorrow. I'm hosting a live grocery savings workshop. We're gonna, this is really drilled down with the cooking demo. I wanted to share a little bit more about how to do this recipe and other ways to stretch proteins. We're gonna be talking about stretching proteins and stretching other products. So if you want more inspiration, um, please join me. If you type the word event, E-V-E-N-T, into the comments, I will message you where to RSVP. You can also visit the events tab here on the $5 Dinners Facebook page. We have an event tomorrow. It's just like an official like Facebook event thing. Tomorrow and Thursday. And if you can't join me live, that is okay. We are gonna have the replay pages here, or the replay videos, excuse me, here on Facebook. We're also gonna host them on our website so you can go and watch them when you're able. You really need to be watching these friends. There's a lot more things that we can do besides stretching proteins. I wanted to highlight this because it's, because the meat and the protein cost of meals is the most expensive part of most meals. I really wanted to kind of break it down and further explain it in today's video. Um, but tomorrow we're gonna get into this plus even more. It should be about 20 to 30 minutes, both, both videos, both Wednesday and Thursday. I know your time is precious, but I also know it's really important to relearn these things, learn these things for the first time, get inspired, get ideas, be encouraged. That's what these events are. They're, it's completely free. I'm doing them here on Facebook. And again, you can catch the replays at any point. So just type the word event into the comments and I'll shoot you a message with that. You can also, again, RSVP here on the page under the events tab to see that you'll just get reminder you'll get a little like ping on the on your facebook notifications when the event starts um wednesday at 8 p.m central time and thursday at 11 a.m central time wednesday night's topic will be five quick ways to save a piece of that is the stretching of the proteins and thursday is going to be how to do six freezer meals in 30 minutes when meat's on sale Okay, the two workshops really do go together, so it'd be really beneficial to watch them both. You can come in your pajamas, you can watch in your bed. I would highly recommend bringing like a little notepad if you like to take notes. Um, you'll be watching on your phone, so you can't take notes on your phone, unless you're watching on a tablet and you have your phone, whatever. Um, so anyways, I really encourage you to RSVP to that to get reminders and information about um, those two events and of course you can come back to the uh, events tab on the page and watch those videos um, while they are there so I hope this was helpful it gives you some ideas I wanted to cook these oven tacos let me show you one more time just because they're that delicious they're just they're just that delicious so delicious um, you can see the cheese is already practically melted I, this, this is five minutes in the oven so I, also fast right it took me a couple minutes to saute all this this or brown the ground beef with the other ingredients plus get them into the dish super super fast and easy so one more time event into the comments and i will message you information on where to rsvp for tomorrow night's grocery savings workshop and thursday's freezer cooking workshop those two these two really go hand in hand you'll see that um, when you come or if you watch both videos you'll see how tied together they are so that's what i got for you for today's episode of the Aaron chase show um, I will see you hopefully tomorrow night at the workshop or Thursday at the workshop. And then I will be back. I don't know what day next week. I got some travel coming up. So <laughs> next week, I'm not sure when we're going to have the, the next episode of the Aaron Chase show, but I'm going to be doing homemade guacamole and homemade queso. You know, Cinco de Mayo is coming and I have yet to meet a guacamole or queso that I didn't love. So I will be doing that uh, sometime next week. I just don't know when yet. So uh, for now. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I look forward to seeing you at one of the workshops this week or on a future episode of The Aaron Chase Show.